Well, hello, YouTube Belfast. We're joining uh, for our midweek connect group, and um, there will be questions supplied, and I'm just going to throw out some thoughts. So we're going to get into it now, and uh, God bless you as you follow in. I can remember the first time I fell off a cliff. I'm just throwing that out there. I can remember the first time I fell off a cliff, and you might think, well, what do you mean? Well, I used to do a bit of climbing. And I can remember I had all the gear, all the safety gear. You would use your rope and you would use certain attachments and fittings to make sure that as you climbed up, you put in these securities. And now the hope was that you would never need them. The hope was that, well, you put them in and you climb to the top and then you, you have sailed back down. No, that was the hope. But I can remember the first time that I fell. And what I realized in that moment was that the true value of what I had in my hands was only realized when it was tested. See, I might have had all these ropes and all these attachments, but until they were tested, I never understood the true value. Tonight, as we gather here, I, I want to jump into Hebrews chapter 6, 13 to 20. And I want us to look at the certainty of God's promise. That's how it's entitled here in, in, in Scripture, the certainty of God's promise. We read these verses. When God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. And so after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. People swear by someone greater than themselves. And the oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all of the argument. Because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs of what was promised. He confirmed it with an oath. God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. We have this hope. Okay, so we have this hope. Uh, only when it's tested do we understand the value. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner, Jesus, has entered in on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever. Now, when we're reading through this, we read about Abraham and his faith. And when we read through scripture, you know, Hebrews 11 is that great hall of, of faith and, you know, by faith people did this. And we read in, in Hebrews eleven seventeen when God tested by faith Abraham, when God tested him, he offered Isaac as a sacrifice. Who who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son. And we remember that moment where God asked Abraham to go to the top of the mountain and to will sacrifice his boy, the root of the promise. Even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. In other words, this is the hope right here in the moment. Abraham responded that God could raise the dead. And so in manner of speaking, he did. He did receive Isaac back from the dead. Now, in this moment, we celebrate Abraham's faith. And throughout the book of Hebrews, we celebrate faith. But in this moment, we're not celebrating his faith. We're celebrating God's faithfulness. We're celebrating that God keeps his word in this moment. Have you ever heard somebody use this saying, no, I swear to, or I promise by the uh, and what they're saying is that honestly, I'll never do it again, or honestly, I'll give you it back, or honestly, and they put this oath in place, or this swear in place, or this promise in place. Uh, and what they're really saying is, by someone bigger than me, I swear, because you mightn't trust my word, but you'll trust their word. And in other words, 
I can't be trusted, but they can be trusted. No, it's almost like they're trying to steal someone else's authority and say, well, they're going to speak on my behalf. In verse 16 here of Hebrews 6, we read these words. People swear by someone greater than themselves. But what happens if you're God? No, if you are God, and I love how the message paraphrase puts Psalm 113 verse 4. It says, God is higher than anything and above anyone. Outshining everything you can see in the skies, who can compare with God? What is there in this world can compare to God? What is there above him? Well, nothing. So who can he swear by? Well, it turns out that he keeps his word. That his very nature is one that cannot lie. And in Hebrews 6 verse 18, we read these words, God cannot lie. So it is impossible for God to lie. Now, we can read in Genesis 15, 7 and uh, forward, where God makes his covenant agreement with Abraham. And in that moment, he asks Abraham to, to take different animal carcasses and split them in two. And God passes between them. There's this symbolism there. And, and what God is saying is that if, as I pass between these animals, if I break my covenant or break my word... I will become like these animals. In other words, if God lies, God dies. But we know that God can't lie. And we also know that God can't die. And this statement really does matter. The reality is that my hope is based on truth. And in these moments... There is nothing matters more than truth. When everything else is being shaken off, truth stands and truth matters. But if I can't trust my truth, then I have nothing. So if I follow Jesus Christ, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and sacrifice. If, If my hope is built on nothing less than not what I see, but what I know to be true and what has been declared to me by Christ. If, I, if that is my hope, well, if it's not true, my hope becomes a hole by which I fall through. So it matters incredibly that God cannot lie. It is impossible for God to lie. So God did this by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. We who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul. Firm and secure, it enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner Jesus has entered on our behalf. He has become our great high priest forever. As I'm talking, there are going to be some images that are going to come up on the the screen. So a friend of mine took these images and posted them on her Instagram. And they're images of hope uh, in, in, uh, well, a quite unstable time we're all in. And the first image is that of a lighthouse. And beside it, she has the word hope. She has a life ring and beside it, life saver. A lifeboat and the word rescuer. Now, the, these images are so powerful, but the image that the that Hebrews uses is this image of an anchor and a forerunner that would that would give us this hope for our soul. As a young Christian, I, I can remember people singing this this hymn, and it, it was, "Will your anchor hold in the storms of life when the clouds unfold their wings of strife?" Whatever that means. Or when the strong tides lift and the cables strain, will your anchor anchor drift or firm remain? We have an anchor um, that's fastened to the rock that cannot move. And, and I got that bit because they were talking about Jesus Christ being our rock and that we're anchored in. 
Now, I, I'm a city guy, and so when it comes to all this seafaring language and things, I don't really know much. But I have a, a visual aid with me here, and this is an anchor. Uh, it's a small anchor for a small boat, and what happens is, well, you drop it into the water, and it's attached to a rope. The rope's attached to your boat, and well, you drop the anchor in, and where the anchor fastens to the rock, it cannot move, and therefore, what the rope's attached to, it becomes safe and secure. So we, we get the imagery of the anchor. The language here is used of an anchor for our soul because we have a forerunner called Jesus Christ. And what would happen is that, and I want you to imagine a harbour. No, most bank holidays, I'll usually head to the north coast of Northern Ireland and um, maybe go to Port Stewart, and you've got this harbour, and you have a harbour wall that protects the boats. At some point in the harbour wall, there will be an entry point, the mouth of the harbour, and what would happen is that in, when it's going stormy and when it's when it's all kicking off and going crazy, that um, you, the big boats couldn't come in through the mouth of the harbour. And so what they would do is they would take their anchor and they would put it in a small boat. And they would, well, obviously the rope would be attached to the big boat. And the small boat was called a forerunner. And so the small boat had no problem, even in the middle of the storm, fighting through the waves, fighting through the, the craziness and ultimately bringing the anchor in through the mouth of the harbour and putting it into the water where it was calm. And so the picture here of Hebrews is this, that we can't make our way in through the harbour gate. We can't get our own way through the storm. But Jesus Christ, our forerunner, he fought through death. He overcome and he brought forth this victory. And he took our identity. He took our soul. He took our destiny. And he took it and he fought for us. And he brought it into the harbour. And there he sank the anchor. So that no matter what happens, we can be sure that we will end up where Jesus is. Now that is hope. And so we're going to unpack this further and we're going to look at the high priest. We're going to look at what all of that means. And you're going to go on to your Zoom groups and we are going to discuss it further. But let me encourage you and leave you with this. That you have a hope from a God who cannot lie. That you are safe and that you are firm. And that no matter how you feel at this moment, where Jesus is, that's where you have access to. He is with the Father, our High Priest. And any time and any moment, we can access him. Can I pray with you? Father, as we go to unpack this further in our Zoom groups, as we um, just take time to look at these truths, would we be encouraged tonight that we have a hope that is steadfast and sure. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's get on Zoom. Thank you, guys.